Okay, welcome to Church Service Part 4. Sorry, it's been so long since uh, it's taken me to make it. For some reason, I uploaded a different one, and then it um, just, like, stopped and, like, didn't work or anything. So, this is Church Service Part 4, finally. Okay, um, we have a guest speaker, actually, today. The owner of YouTube channel, Coffee and Patterville. Be sure to check out his videos. They're really good, too. Watch for the Lenny Lego Show. Coming January 2011, isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, he'll be reading something out of the Bible for you. Oh, good morning, everybody. All right. I want to take a minute here to read uh, the beginning of Numbers chapter 21, verse uh, verse one. Okay. Okay. Numbers 21. Aaron, Aaron destroyed. Now, after Aaron died, where Aaron died, the king of the Hey, his name's Aaron. Whatever. Uh, whatever. Okay. When the Kenite king of Haran, who lived in the Negev, heard that Israel was coming on the road of Ephraim, he attacked the Israelites and captured some of them. Then Israel made this vow to the Lord. If you would deliver these people into our hands, we will totally destroy their cities. The Lord listened to Israel's plea and gave the Kenites over them. They completely destroyed the hands of their towns, so, so the place was named Hormat. Now I want to point something out to you. Now, they said that they would, do, would destroy their cities if God would help them. But do remember one thing. Don't help God only if He helps you. Because, see, it's not always where He helps you first and then you'll help Him. Most of the time, we help first. This is one of my favorite stories from the bronze snake. Now, of course, the Israelites started as traveling through the desert. I'm tired! There's no food! There's some food. That's me! I don't want manna! Now, the Lord was angry. He was like, okay, snakes, guard you. <laughs> <laughs> and there are venomous snakes like King Cobras. But Moses prayed to God and thought he could take the snakes away. But God told him to make a bronze snake and put it on a pole. They're like, oh, yeah, we're going to make this bronze snake here. We put it on this pole. I drove him to say, here. I gave this fine Moses. No, no, he didn't do that. Yeah. So, now what happened was if they were to get bitten by a snake, the Israelites, they could look at the bronze snake and they live. But they just end like complaining. Well, I have a question for you. Are apples green? <laughs> I'll let you know. I have another question for you. Do lamps fly? No. So, did they learn their lesson? No. They yeah, asked a while before they made into a problem, so I'll talk more about that later. So, the Israelites moved on and camped at Oboth. And there they set out from Oboth and camped into. Uh, I, um, I don't even know what. Uh, and now they can't. Okay, they moved from Oboth into a desert, and in the desert they faced Moab towards the sunrise. From there they moved on and camped in the Zered Valley. They set out from where they camped alongside of Arnon, which is the desert extending into the Ormorite territory. The Arnon is the border of Moab, which has nothing to do with this sermon. I'll skip that part, so it has nothing to do with it. So it's from there. Well, now they continue on to Beer. Can you believe that? Um, they moved on to Beer from where the people, uh, from where the Lord said, the Moses gathered the people and I will, I will give them water. Then they go inside the star. I'm spreading out the well, seeing the battle about the well, prison is the dark, the home was saying, the nobles with scepters and staffs. Well, here are the Israelites praising God again because God's doing what they want him to do. That's the trouble with the Israelites. You see, they were praising God for what he could do. I noticed that only if God was doing for them what they want, when they want it, they're praising them. They're all happy. But when God gives them manna to eat, they're mad at God. They hate it. But we should seek God for who He is, not for what He can do. You see, we should, and the reason we should do that is because when we seek God for what He can do, we only love Him when He does good for us. But when we seek Him for who He is, then we love Him no matter what. So, keep that in mind. Alright, now, I'll let that hats quickly come up here and continue today's story. Okay. So where were we at? Chapter 21. The defeat of Sihon and Og? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Defeat of Sihon and Og. Israel sent messengers to say to Sihon, king of the Amorites, let us pass through your country. We will turn aside into any field or vineyard 
or drink water from any well. We will travel along the King's Highway until we pass through your territory. The Sihon will not let Israel pass through his territory. He mustered his entire army and marched out into the desert against Israel. When he reached Jehaz, he fought with Israel. Israel, however, put him to the sword and took over his land from the army to the Jabbok, but only as far as the Ammonites, because their border was fortified. Israel captured all the cities of the Amorites and occupied them, including Heshbon and all its surrounding settlements. Heshbon was the city of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab and had taken from him all of, all his land as far as the Arnon. That is why the poets say, Come to Heshbon and let it be rebuilt. Let Sihon's city be restored. Fire went out from Heshbon, a blaze from the city of Sihon. It consumed Ar of Moab, the citizens of Arnon's heights. Woe to you, O Moab! You are destroyed, O people of Chemosh. He has given up his sons as fugitives and his daughters as captives to Sion, king of the Amorites. But we have overthrown them. Heshbon has destroyed all the way to Dibon. We have demolished them as far as Natha, which extends to Medeba. So Israel settled in the land of Amorites. After Moses had sent spies to Jazer, the Israelites captured its surrounding settlements and drove out the Amorites who were there. Then they turned and went up along the road toward Bashan, and all the king of Bashan and his whole army marched out to meet them in battle at Adre. The Lord said to Moses, Do not be afraid of him, for I have handed him over to you with his whole army in his land. Do to him what you did to Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned Heshbon. So they struck him down together with his sons and his whole army, leaving them no survivors, and they took possession of his land. Okay, in case you ever want to read that on, in your own Bible, that's Numbers chapter 21. Okay, that concludes this episode today. Um, hey, Craig, can, can I come up you for a minute? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, now, everybody, before, now, if you've watched the previous episodes of Church Service, you do really sit near the end. We do a very important announcement. Now, Craig, did you do that in today's sermon? Sure. Yeah, all right. Well, uh, Brother Chris, you come up here and just right. get it. Okay, brother, uh, I'm your brother. Uh, Wait, no, I'm, we're not brothers. Well, no, it's, it's a traditional uh, preacher. Yeah, probably. I know. All right, um, now Craig here, he's going to tell you about a very important decision you make if you have not made the decision. So let's welcome him again. Okay, um, so if you have not been saved, you should get saved now, like right now. Um, I'm going to ask Brother Aaron to do the prayer. That's me? Yes. All right. Because um, you will get to, this is like the first church of this part. Yes, it is. All right, everybody. Well, everybody, you know, if you haven't got saved, if you haven't read this prayer, then you really should pray this prayer with us. So, please bow your hands and please repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, please forgive me of all the sins I've done. And uh, I want you to be part of my life. And Lord, help me to know how to make this life of mine a very prosperous life. And Lord, help me to prosper and be a part of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, I think that's it. Yep. Okay. Okay, see you next time on church service.